Hello my friends and welcome to episode 39 of our Football Manager 2020 Let's Play with Rangers. Today is just going to be a January transfer window review in all honesty. We've got a fair bit to cover and I wasn't expecting to be doing that. But we've got a few bits to go through so we've got a few bits of uh, business in the summer uh, that I forgot to mention. Simon Edgar coming in as a physio, Andrew Blair came in as a reserves physio and Steve Allen as a youth physio. Uh, they were done, of course, by our technical director from memory. We brought in a few extra people, so Jim Stewart and Michael Beale have both left. Javi Valero comes in as a new goalkeeping coach. Mark Chamber, uh, sorry, Thomas Horch in as a coach. Mark Chamberlain in as a coach. Ben Garner in as a coach. And then Johan in as a scout. And Javier in as a scout. That's going to leave our staff looking pretty good now. I'm not going to show you that just yet because we've got to go through all our transfers right now. As you see, January is from here and here. It's a lot of business. So on the outs, Kerr Bradley's away. Lucas Klosterman is away to China, I think, Tangina Rin. Indeed they are. £50 million we got for him. We actually broke a profit. For a, He came in, he played six games, got one assist, a very average a 6.8 rating it was not really worth it for us but we managed to somehow break a profit for Lucas Klosterman of about 1.75 million so even after wages we probably made a profit there uh, Matias Arenzo I recalled him because he wasn't getting game time he's now away to Derby on loan when he is getting game time and that will hopefully develop the uh, Uruguayan a bit better in the championship Nathan Young Combs also away to the championship on loan where he is also getting game time and he has been promised to play in the left wing position. So I would kind of be curious to see Sheffield Wednesday, please. But he's playing Shadow Strike. They have promised him preferred position. You, ah. Shannon Baptiste, we sold. We broke even before wages on Shannon Baptiste. 13.75 million we bought him for. 13.75 million we sold him for. I didn't expect to make break even on him. I expected to make a loss. He's not played for Southampton yet. Millwall away to take Glenn Middleton on loan, but he's played one. Again, they're promising him right wing. So again, we'll have a quick look, see what he's playing. Right wing, that will do me. Played one on the left. As a sub, I will accept that. The other two on in the right wing. Jack Monroe away out on loan. Richie Hall starting this affected things. I had a striker that came in, and I'm going to go through that, but I forgot I'd had a bit on him. So basically, we ended up with four strikers because we had Morelos, we had the new guy who we've not discovered yet, we had Ruiz, I always want to call him Diaz, but I'm sure it's Abel Ruiz, and obviously Richie Holster, so I felt I wasn't getting game time. So I put him on the loan list and I thought, do you know what, if we can get the right loan for him, I'm going to put it alone rather than try to develop him at the club because you know he's probably the best for going out on loan and getting that game time right now. And we've got this, get 200k a, week, a month rather if he does not play, 350k if he doesn't, and again, he'll pay some of his wages, £725 a week if he does play, and 2200 when he doesn't. It's not anywhere close to all his wages, but you know, it's just a little punishment, and I was quite happy if he goes out and gets games. I'm content with that. And then we got a bid straight away. Literally, it was about two days after the Richie Holster was sale, uh, loan out. We got a huge bid for Alfredo Morelos and negotiated it, expecting him to just walk away. But in reality, it was the right thing to do. Now, eligibility, he was very, very close to get a British citizenship. Um, but he'd have to return within 49 days, of course, to get that. About 38.5 million. I think 11.25 million of that's over three years or something. Obviously, some of that also goes to HI, his previous club from Finland, uh, HGK. And we've got Iger Gomez out on loan now. Iger Gomez is an in. We brought him in because we had a big bid for Nico Katic. So I found him when I was searching and scouting lots of young central defenders that could potentially replace. Now, we bought him for 1.9 million plus a couple of add ons. Um, based on performance for us and Brazil uh, they weren't really that expensive ones but he's a very very good young defender frustratingly though he did not get a work permit which really surprised me you know, looking at him he's not that far off our first team already 
17 jump and reach, 13 head is a bit of an issue, position and attack is a bit of an issue, it's, it's concentration, you know, all that can be worked on, I felt this was quite risk free almost, um, but unfortunately did not get a work permit, so on the ends, we've got a lot, as we see, we've got a bit of scroll there, so Jonathan Ross comes in from Aberdeen, three and a half star potential, uh, youngster Ryan Allen comes in from Hibs, his sort of potential seems to flick between four and three star, but another decent player, uh, Jack Muirhead, in fact, Ryan Allen's Dundee, so it's stand corrected on that. Jack Muirhead comes in from Dundee United as well, um, a three and a half star potential midfielder. I needed to boost the youth team, so I basically scouted every Scottish youngster. Uh, Aidan Johnson in from Inverness Cali, he's a goalkeeper. Mark Green, also in from Dundee United, also a goalkeeper, but had no goalkeeper, so I prioritised goalkeepers and had slightly lower potential. Uh, but because we had no young goalkeepers, we've got a uh, Steve Sinclair. He's coming in from St Johnston, another midfielder. This is a striker that I bought. I had to wait until I think it was his loan deal with his. He had a loan deal with Orlando City, but he actually had a pretty successful spell. We had to wait on ending. And what a player he is! Five point seven five million already valued at eight point five four star ability, five star potential. He has got Wonder Kid rating. So I'm excited to see how he develops because he could be something special. He's got very good technique, good finishing for his age, great first touch, good free kick taking as well, high flare, amazing off the ball, decent pace, okay composure. This guy could be something special and if you look down there, he's played in three league games with three goals and an assist and an assist in the Scottish Cup game as well. So he has hit the ground running very, very quickly. Uh, Simon Elliott comes in on loan, uh, sorry, in from who does he, Dundee, he cost, he's three star potential, Johnny Banks comes in, he's four star potential, don't really like his stat distribution so I don't, may have a whole lot of hope for him, Dominic Solanke, because of Morelos being sold we had, and we'd loaned out Richie Holster, I had a choice with people that we could bring in, we had Solanke for the price that we brought him in for which was 10 million rising to 11. Um, as the baby monitors are kind of just bleeping at me right now to help me put it on charge so I'll need to do that in a second but Dominic Slanky was one of the options for 10 million rising to 11 million with based on add-ons and the other option was Rehan Brewster on loan to the end of the season I preferred Brewster as the option for the team but I felt, you know what, if I was to play this game the way I would normally and you know, I was continuing on this save, I would buy the player that I could sell on. So, basically Solanke won on that basis, because if I want to continue on the save, that's exactly what I would do. Sorry if my audio went a bit there. I obviously was leaning to get the charger for the thing while still trying to record, because professionalism. Zifuk, Zifuk, I'm not sure how it pronounces. Let me know down in the comments down below, because I'd be curious. Obviously I record ahead, so, I might not see it until I've recorded a few episodes, so hopefully don't get too annoyed at me. But he comes in from FC Groggenheim, and the Dutchman is a direct replacement, almost like flight, but better in attack than Klosterman. It's kind of what I'm seeing here. He's got better determination, though. Had a couple of games, one start, one off the bench. Not the best start in the world, but she produces on less wages. He's a solid backup, and I think he will suit our system more. Uh, we've got Igor Gomez, who we've mentioned. We then brought in a few extra players. Tony Gomjoni comes in. How much did he cost from Zurich? 4.3 million. Release cost already worth 8.25. Plays both for midfield roles. Can fall back and play in defence as well, although more of a playmaker. Just a solid player. And, you know, he spent all his career in Switzerland with Zurich. We triggered a release clause that he had that was below his value. So I knew this was fairly risk-free. Um, stepping up a league in my opinion I'm not sure how the league reputation works between us and Switzerland just now and I just felt it was risk free backup kind of thing we've got Tudor Petrov in for 2.3 million from Bulgaria solid defender again, he did get his work permit but he's on a big big wage to get that unfortunately, I'm not quite so keen on that wage but again, hopefully he can develop into something pretty special and finally this is a position that I wasn't going to get, but I spotted him. He was worth a decent amount of money with a release clause of 6.5 million teams in the Champions League. Already worth 9.25 coming in. It's a Swiss, in, I was going to say international, it's not a Swiss international, Swiss goalkeeper 
Jonas Omlin. He's got 18 reflexes, similar sort of thing to Rajkovic and most other stats. So again, he's 28 years old, he's not really in my ballpark, but he's on a decent wage that we could afford to have an extra goalkeeper in there. And I felt, just bring him in, let him have six months, we could sell him on at a profit if I was to continue on the save, should I do so. I've not decided whether we continue on after the season or not. I'll, either way, I'd keep it as a personal uh, that I would come back to in the long term. So that is the in and the out. £103 million spent this season. Crazy money. £132 million going out. Sorry, rather coming in. Again, crazy, crazy money. And a turn down £28.5 million for Nico Katic. And then there was another bid for him on deadline day, but it was, it was similar sort of sort of ballpark, 25, 30 million after negotiations. But I was holding out because it was deadline day. I was basically like, no, you're giving me 40 million or nothing. And the club eventually walked away. That leaves us with 26 million in the bank still. It was back up to 64. Um, currently spending 710,000 per week on the wage bill. Um, not great that, that's quite expensive, I'd like to bring that down rather than keep it where it is, but you know, we've got a fairly fairly large squad. We do also have the debt of the stadium loan, which is not due for repayment for another nine years, and that takes off obviously a fair amount um, when you're paying an extra £3.8 million, a, excuse me, £3 million a year. Uh, projection isn't great, you know, we're expected to be about £15 million at the end of this season. And then in the red at the end of next season. But again, obviously, Champions League money and stuff hopefully would offset all that and sales, of course. Because I won't continue to spend 10 million, 20 million pound on players where I have this season. I've tried to be very aggressive because I don't I didn't see me playing past the end of this season. Um how's Fadenes getting on actually? Just because he's there. First choice goalkeeper at Villa, that's fairly decent in the Premier League. It's conceded 39 goals, but you know, not the strongest team you would expect that. Squad wise, as you can see, it's looking fairly decent. We've got a scroll bar, and it, you know, it's a decent scroll bar. Alex laid it out for a little while. Actually, do you know what? Well, you've got no interest. It's been a while since I offered you a contract. Can we get. No, you're still valuing that. And I don't mean to sound harsh. I could get more than £29 million pound for Alex Lowry. Do you have a release clause currently? Yeah, 23 million. So, okay. If we can up it to the 29, then fair enough. See if we can just knock in an expired date of 25. Earliest possible expired date. And go with that. And we'll offer 14. And you've now restricted that even further. Okay, let's just walk away. I'm not going to pay you all that extra money to not get you off the wage bill. Kokova stays, uh, Barisic stays, all stuff like that. And a result since the last episode. Now, I'm not doing a game in this episode, and I'm not going straight into the next game. But I've kind of felt like this was the right thing. As you see, it's been very, very good. All green. Not all plain sailing, though. We'll get into that in a minute. So, first competitive game after the Comarnock would be uh, East Cold Bride. Eight and I'll rotate the side of it, but it's still a fairly strong side, you know. That is still a very strong Premiership side that I put out. And basically, Dobber got four, Gomez got one, Katic got one, Batista Mayer got one, and Harry Wilson got one off the bench. I feel a bit sorry for East Cold Bride because I'd loaned out all the sort of fringe players that probably would have played this game should they have been here and fit. But unfortunately for East Cold Bride, they were all loaned out. No new ones had been really brought in that were ready to be pushed into the first team yet. And... So it was a stronger team than what I'd normally have put out, basically, even though it was a reserve or a rotation side. We then beat Partick Thistle 6-0. They ended up with nine men. We were 2 3 nil up by the time they got their first man sent off. They got their second man sent off in the 86 minute. It was fairly irrelevant, but a brace for Borna Barisic, one from the spot, one from a free kick. Casper Dahlberg scoring. David Turnbull, who was recalled from loan, uh, scoring. Sergio Gomez scored, and Alfredo Morello scored. And what I'm pretty sure was his farewell goal. And then we played Ross County. Daniel Allianz. Alaniz. Alaniz. Scored in a brace. Sergio Gomez missed a penalty in this game before we played Hibs at home. Dirk Proper, Nico Katic and Alaniz again on the score sheet. There, 
Alan has unfortunately picked up a knock in this game, as well as Reed recovering from a knock, which meant that Dominic Solanke is our only fit choice of striker. You know, we do play Dahlberg up there, he's played a couple of times up there for Motherwell. So Solanke played against Motherwell. And after 25 minutes, we found ourselves 2 0 down. So I changed things at half time and I went to a 4 2 4 with the inside forwards on support, uh, Gomez on support, Dahlberg and Slanky up top. I brought Ruiz on about the 70th minute, I think, even though he was still injured at the time. So I'm starting getting him back up to match fitness. Um, but we recovered it uh, just after half time. Harry Wilson scored on a fairly decent counter attack. Then Nico Katic scored from a corner inside 10 minutes from half time to get us level. And then Harry Wilson scored from a Ryan Kent cross uh, to give us the victory. So never give up attitude from the boys. I was very, very pleased with that. That is sort of going to start winding up this episode now. So we need to decide when we're coming back. And I kind of think this Aberdeen game would be a good one for that. Gives us a break before we do the Europa League knockouts next. I think it would make sense. It's about four games time. So I can update you from Motherwell. Um, obviously I'm going to go and play St Mirren now off camera. Uh, then I'll play the Hibs game in the Scottish Cup. The Dundee United game and the Aberdeen game. Obviously pendant that that doesn't get knocked back for a Cup game. But it shouldn't. Only one injury in the squad just now. So that's fairly good. Uh, I'm fairly content with the staff. If you can have a look at our coaching. You know, we can maybe improve in possession technical. Uh, we've got five stars in a couple of places, including by myself, because I always pick my stats based on trying to have at least one five star uh, coaching role if we can get the numbers. So there's a couple of areas that are still for improvement, but I'm quite happy with that just now. In fact, Thomas Horsch, one of the new guys, is actually the weak link there. Uh, but thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe. Let me know down below what you think of the transfers, what you think of the window in general. What would you have done differently? Would you have gone for Brewster on loan for six months or Solanke with the intent of selling him in the summer and making, hopefully making a bit of profit? If you enjoyed this episode, though, guys, hit like, hit subscribe. Hope we'll catch you all next time.